and hopefully the microphone will cover the bulge issue that I've got going on in this suit. Now that I'm bragging. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you might wonder what happened to the animation videos that I used to make. Over a year ago, I used to make my own original short movies and recreations of famous movie scenes in CGI, and I haven't done one of those for about a year now. The reason I stopped was because I constantly kept running into the same roadblock. I was trying to do more and more advanced projects, but I couldn't ever get the characters right, specifically the animation. Character animation is a very niche skill. It's something that most 3D generalists like myself either can't do or certainly can't do very well. Even if you are a professional animator and you take the time to learn those skills, you can spend up to a whole workday, certainly several hours, doing just one or two seconds of character animation. So the projects that I want to make are 10 to 20 minutes long short stories that have multiple characters. You can see the problem that I was running into here. It's just not practical to manually animate that many characters. Enter motion capture. So motion capture in a nutshell is the idea of taking a real world actor's performance and applying it directly to a 3D character. There's two different ways to do motion capture for the most part. The traditional method uses a marker system. You have a performer wear a very tight suit that has reflective markers all over it. Sometimes these days they use LED lights instead. And then you put them on the stage, which is called a volume. The volume is surrounded by high resolution cameras and really strong lights. The reflective markers obviously pick up the light that's hitting them and the cameras pick up the reflective markers. Then you feed that into some software, which figures out where all of the markers on the person's body were moving, and you can apply that directly to a 3D character. That system works pretty well. It's been used for decades, but it does have some big downsides. Firstly, the cost of a marker-based system can be extremely prohibitive, especially to indie developers and small studios. It can cost several thousand dollars a day just to rent studio space for motion capture, so you can imagine how expensive these systems are. Secondly, because it relies on cameras being able to see these dots or these LEDs, if you have multiple actors, for instance, performing a fight, or you have props such as shields and things, and they're blocking the camera view, you might not actually pick up all of the performance all that well. The problems are even worse if you want the actor to go outside of the volume, which is obviously only a certain size. You might want to do this, let's say you want a 3D character who's going to be on an actual set interacting with props or interacting with other actors. Then you're going to have to set up a system of cameras and things that are going to be outside in the real world and you're going to have to remove all of those cameras from the final shot. There's an alternative to marker-based motion capture which is called inertial mocap. In these systems, you replace the markers with a series of sensors all over the limbs. These sensors are very similar to the ones that are in your phone, which can detect uh, which way the orientation of the phone is when you flip the screen over. So by knowing the orientation of all of these markers and using accelerometers to figure out how fast they're moving, you can figure out what all the limbs are doing compared to all the other markers. Now, the advantages to this, for a start, it's significantly cheaper. You don't have to have a volume, you don't have to have all the cameras and the lights set up. You just need the suit and you need a computer or a laptop to connect it to. That makes it a lot more versatile as well. You can film in really tight spaces, such as inside a car. You can have a character on set and you don't need to worry about removing all the cameras later on or with the lights interfering with the set lighting. And you don't have to worry about the field of view of the camera because there is no cameras. There's just the sensors inside the suit. The biggest downside to inertial systems is that the markers only track their own orientation. They don't know their exact position in 3D space. This can cause a problem called drift. Basically drift is where a marker moves from one place to another place. And then when it moves back, it thinks it's somewhere slightly different. So the best example would be, for instance, if a character puts a cup down and then goes to pick it back up later on, they might slightly miss where the cup originally was because things just don't quite line up in 3D space. But I've found that's not really much of a problem. One company that makes inertial motion capture systems is called Rococo. I followed them on social media for a long time now because they're always posting really interesting work that other artists have made using their equipment. They were good enough a while ago to offer me their latest suit, the SmartSuit Pro 2, for a review. 
They haven't put any stipulations on what I can say and they're not paying me for this video so I can give you a totally unbiased review. Apart from the fact they have obviously sent me the suit. So speaking of the suit, let's put it on. Put what on? The last suit you'll ever wear. So this is the suit and the first thing I want to say is it's really well engineered. It's made out of a very sort of lightweight, stretchy material and a lot of the suit is actually this kind of mesh which makes it really, really breathable which is great if you're doing a lot of like heavy exercise stuff or like combat, things like that. You don't want to get too sweaty while you're um, trying to record the motion capture. If you do get too sweaty, thankfully you can actually chuck this thing in the washing machine. It's got all these hidden zippers all over the place so you can take the sensors and all the wiring out and you can wash it. Uh, even this headband I'm not just doing a Mark Knopfler impression. It is actually a sensor on the back of this and you can remove the sensor from, this is just Velcro basically. So you can remove that really easily and watch the whole thing. So the sensors all over this thing, it's got one in the hand here. There's one on the forearm, there's one on the bicep. For the most part, you can't really fail them. They're only about the size of a matchbox and they don't really cause any problems. I feel like you can move around really easily in this thing and it's not like gonna impede your movement. Or feel really heavy or awkward or anything like that just like wearing a kind of tight fitting suit now to make sure that the markers do stay in place there's straps all over this thing so you can kind of tighten things up the uh, sizing is quite forgiving in this i'm pretty barrel chested i have like a huge chest so i was worried that was going to like not fit but it's actually stretchy enough where that's not really an issue at all and you can't see and i'm not going to show you my feet but I have straps on my feet as well and there's even markers on there. Now what you might have noticed here is that I have these wires hanging out. Uh, this system does track your hands, but it doesn't do fingers. If you want to do fingers, you need to get one of these. This is called a smart glove and it just connects up to here. You basically roll these sleeves up and then you connect the gloves with the wire and then you get finger movements as well. So this is what the gloves look like when they're connected. You just kind of roll the sleeve up and I'm pretty sure with the hand sensor in the suit deactivates when you have the gloves in. They uh, have a sensor on the ends here. You can see they actually don't have any fingertips, which is good because it gives you like more tactile grip on things. But apparently one sensor in each of the fingers is actually good enough to figure out exactly what your fingertips are doing. And I found that actually it does work ridiculously well. It has this sort of leather on the palms as well, which is good if you need to get a grip on something because the rest of this material isn't very grippy. Um, it's powered by the suit itself. Uh, speaking of which, the suit doesn't come with a power source. I think that's because of shipping restrictions. It's just easier for them to not sell it with those. These are really cheap though. I bought a couple of these power banks online. These are 10,000 milliwatt hours each. And each thousand milliwatt hours gives you about an hour of suit time. So one of these on a full charge will get you 10 hours. And if you get a couple of them, you know, you can use this thing all day without worrying about power. Realistically, I'm on 84% right now. And I've been using this suit for a good couple of hours while I've been filming this, probably two hours. So yeah, it's like, it lasts a long time. You don't really need to worry about the power. The suit connects to your computer using Wi-Fi. Now, the default behavior, which is the best behavior, apparently, as far as I can tell for the suit, is to connect the suit to your Wi-Fi router, and then the Wi-Fi router is connected to your computer. Now, ideally, if you have a separate Wi-Fi router, which is just for the suit that you can have right next to you, that's the best thing. But it isn't necessary. I have a router which is two rooms away. It's quite far away on the other end of my apartment and my computer and the internet and the suit are all connected through that right now. And when I first got the suit, I did have a little problem where I couldn't get it to connect like that. But luckily there actually is a separate way to connect. Let's say that you were out using a laptop and you didn't have a Wi-Fi router that you could connect to. The suit itself can act as a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect a laptop or a computer directly to the suit. There's a little uh, hub that's in the base of the spine on the suit. And that's kind of the brain of the thing. The power cell connects to that. And that's what you connect your Wi-Fi to as well. It's where the power button is and everything else. All of the recording of motion capture data is done in a piece of software called Rococo Studio. When you first put the suit on and open studio, sometimes you'll see that your character looks a little bit like a 
uh, zombie from the Thriller music video. That's just because you need to calibrate. Um, the fingers are working fine here, but I'm just going to calibrate the whole suit. So I'm going to right click on my actor. You can add your own measurements and things like that. I haven't done that, which would give me better results. I've just got my basic height in there so far. But I'm just going to calibrate, pause, stand with my legs together and my nose and thumbs pointing forward. I'll calibrate everything and it does a really good job of sorting that out very quickly. And then if we want to record the data, all we need to do is just press this button. So once you've recorded your data, it'll take you over to this view. This is where you do the cleanup. All motion capture data needs to be cleaned up. The raw data is not good enough by itself. Thankfully, it has all of these different filters that you can turn on or turn off. And this will control things like, let's say your character jumps on a box and you want to change uh, its height. Obviously, the suit itself doesn't know what height it's at, so you can manually do that. It'll fix things like knee popping, which is where your legs go sort of artificially straight. It also keeps track of which feet are making contact with the ground at any time. And if it messes that up, you can just easily drag these around or extend them, add new points or change the points. What I like to do is record video footage while I'm recording the motion capture. And then I can compare what I actually did to what the motion capture thinks I did. So if my feet are on the ground when they shouldn't be or whatever, I can easily make those changes. So Rikoko Studio is completely free, but it does have some plans which can unlock additional features. By standard, it uses a FBX exporter. And even in the free version, it has lots of different rig types. For instance, this is a standard Mixamo rig. And it's the recording that I made earlier on of me just walking back and forward in my office. So because it's a Mixamo rig, I can bring in a Mixamo character. And there is a Rococo Studio plugin. What I'm going to do is select the mocap data as the source. And the target is going to be this character. Build bone list and it'll try and match these up. Usually it does a really good job. Occasionally it'll mess up. Uh, specifically the arms I've found, but in this case it's fine, but it's very easy to reassign them if it does get confused. And then just retarget the animation. And as easy as that, we now have our Mixamo character with my mocap data on top of me walking around in my office. Now, usually this works pretty well straight out of the box. The only issue that you sometimes occasionally get is clipping on the arms. That's happened basically because my proportions are different to this character's. I have wider shoulders, so it's kind of clipping through a bit. But that's actually really easy to fix. I'm just going to hide this entirely, and I'm going to find his rig. I'm going to open up this graph editor. Let's go into pause mode here, select this bone, and we need to find the rotation that's going to swing his arms out a little bit. Let's just select this whole track. And this is the one. And I'm just going to lift this up just a little bit until it doesn't clip through anymore. And then this arm should work fine now. Yeah, it needs slightly readjusting a little bit more, but mostly that looks pretty good. So there you have it. That's my more cap on this guy in a few minutes. So far, I've been really impressed with the Smart Suit 2 and the Smart Gloves. I've had these for quite a while, but it's only been the last two months where I've actually been able to use them inside projects. I'm working on a few quite ambitious animation projects right now. It's the sort of thing without the suit I simply wouldn't be able to do, and they're shaping up really nicely. The last thing I suppose I need to talk about is the cost. I haven't actually mentioned how much this is all going to set you back. Now, the suit itself, I've wrote these down because I won't remember these numbers, is... $1,995 and the smart gloves are $1,745, which probably puts it out of the reach of someone who's just a hobbyist. But if you make any money out of doing 3D art or you think you might in the future, it's definitely worth the investment. But the really good thing is they have this new thing that they've launched called the Indie Creator Bundle, where you can save 40%. If you are an independent artist or a small studio with less than three employees, and you make less than $100,000 a year, you can save 40% on a bundle which includes the smart suit, the gloves, and an annual subscription to Rococo Studio. Altogether, that comes to $2,245. 
So like I said, it's 40% off what that would cost you normally. I think that's a really great deal. Um, I actually made a version of this video a while ago and I pushed this back just because they announced that deal and I thought it was definitely worth mentioning. And it kind of made me reconsider the whole suit and like what I thought about it because I think those prices are actually very reasonable. And I think that just about sums up everything. Have a really great Christmas, guys, if you celebrate it. If not, at least have a happy new year. And I'll see you very shortly with some more videos. I have this next animation project lined up, which should be coming out in the next few weeks. So definitely keep an eye out for that.